This movie is an overview of Ursa Viewer. Ursa Viewer is really the heart of many different tools here at Ursa. You can access it from this button on the main page or in search results from many different searches on our site. From this kind of a search, you may have search results that say to Ursa Viewer like this, or if you have search results that look like this, if you click on this icon, it will launch Ursa Viewer with those search results loaded. Most commonly though, you probably just click on this icon from the front page. Now the first time you load this page, you get this blue pop-up that reminds you what you need to do. You're dropped first into the results tab, but in order to have something to put into the results, either you have to upload a file or you have to search for data. Let's search for images. The first thing you need to do is choose an image type. You can load FITS images, create a three color composite, or load HIPS images. Let's get some FITS images. Then you need to identify the source of your image. You can search URSA's holdings, upload an image from your disk, or from the web, or from the URSA workspace. Let's get something from URSA's holdings. It's likely to be the most common thing you'll do anyway. Then you need to put in a target. I'm going to put in M16. Then I need to put in a cutout size. I need to pick the units first, and then type in the number. Now I need to select a data set. There are many, many, many choices. There are so many, it's overwhelming. It's most efficient to filter down this list by looking at the filters on the left. You can filter by mission, by project type, or by band. Let's look at mission. M16 was undoubtedly observed by WISE because WISE is an all-sky survey. So let's pick WISE all WISE. We can keep picking additional images. Let's unclick WISE and look at Spitzer. Since M16 is a galactic star forming region, let's filter down to galactic. Now we have many, many fewer data sets to weed through. To learn more about each project, I could click on the eye with a circle in it for each program to learn more, but in this case, I know that Glimpse observed M16. Finally, if I clear these, then filter down by near infrared, I can find the two mass six degree, not six times, but six degree mosaics. Now, search. Now it's come back and loaded all of the images that it found. These are FITS images, so you can use the toolbar up here to interact with them. There are other videos that go through the image toolbar in more detail, but let me highlight just a few things. First of all, the images come back locked by color and stretch, so that if you change the color table to a different color table, they all change. However, it's not necessarily locked by position, and you can see that not all of the images are in the same orientation. I'm going to click on WISE 3, see how it's outlined in brown, and then if I go up here and click Align and Lock by WCS, now all of them are locked to the orientation of WISE 3, which is north up in our index, and you can see that the glimpse tiles were created in galactic coordinates. Right now we're looking at many images at a time. If you want to look at one image at a time, you can click on this. If you want to get a list of images, you can click on that. This is a Firefly table like all the other tables in this tool. So just like at all the rest of these tables, it's filterable and sortable. So if I click on the wavelength header and go back to looking at many images at once, the images are sorted in the same order as the table. Let's go back and load another image. Let's go back to the images tab and this time let's get a hips image. HIPS images are fundamentally different than FITS. HIPS images are designed to cover large chunks of sky. So if I leave it as M16, I can ask for a much larger field of view if I want. Let's ask for a degree, and let's ask for the Herschel image search. Now the reason it has the blue footprint here is because that's the footprint of the WISE image, which was the active image when we loaded that HIPS image. We can also search for catalog. Let's click on the WISE 3 image again, and then go to the Catalogs tab. Now the Catalogs tab searches URSA's holdings. There's other ways to search a wide variety of additional catalogs, but that's covered in other movies. Instead of a cone search, let's pick Polygon. It gives me a choice of asking for the entire image that I selected when I initiated this search. I'm gonna ask for that search. Okay, now it's loaded the catalog that it found. The catalog is down here. It's overlaid the catalog and the images here, and it's made a plot here. 
Now this catalog has 5,300 sources in it, and that's actually too many sources for it to render each source individually in the plot or on the image. The fact that the plot is showing us grayscale boxes is a dead giveaway, that even when we zoom in on the images, it's not showing each and every source overlaid on the images. That is a really important thing to remember, and I have forgotten this on occasion. Let's filter down this catalog. The filters icon here enables the filters box if you don't already have it. Let's filter down the columns to just be the high signal to noise sources. So this is wise one signal to noise, let's say greater than 10, then wise two greater than 10 signal to noise, wise three greater than 10 signal to noise, and wise four signal to noise greater than 10. Now we have many fewer sources. We have individual sources shown in the plot, and so we know that they're shown individually on the images as well. Since I have pan by table row turned on over here, if I click on individual sources in the plot, then the images jump to center the source that I'm selecting. It also works here. If I click on individual sources in the table, then the images jump to center that. You can see that some of the sources are off the edge of the glimpse image, which is why it was giving me the, you know, the off edge message there. Okay, we've got a complicated filter imposed here. Let's add a new column. Let's call this high SNR. We could call it whatever we want, but what I'm going to do is use a preset function. I'm going to set the filtered rows to true and the rest to false. Add column. So now I have a new column at the end here. So if I cancel these filters and I retrieve all 5,300 sources, if I want to recover that filter at any time, I can do that with a minimum number of clicks. Now, rather than manually reimposing the, the filters in all four of the signal to noise ratio columns, I can recover it by just imposing the Boolean filter on that Boolean column that I created. We can also change what's plotted. Let's go to the gears, and instead of RA, let's do W1M Pro minus W4M Pro. And for Y, let's do W1M Pro. And because this is a color magnitude diagram, let's be sure to reverse the Y axis so we have bright objects at the top. Okay, so now we have a color magnitude diagram. If I wanted to, I could add errors. But let's see, this bright red source looks like it might be interesting. Indeed, this is a star forming region, so that bright red source, this source right here, is probably a young star because it is bright and red. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see this source right here. Let's go here, go and search Simbad, and go let's see if we, what this is. Indeed, it's a young stellar object. So this has been a very quick introduction to just some of the powerful tools within the Ursa Viewer application.